Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to another One Night Only tournament here on RGL TV. I am your host, Enemy, joined right now by Kavik and Kavik. We have a hell of a tournament today with Castlevania here in October. Yeah, it's quite stacked. Uh, boy, I, this is by far the most stacked tournament we've put together, and we have had some stacked tournaments, but, I mean, if you're looking for a who's who of Castlevania, you've come to the right place. Uh, we got your K-Mac, we got your Furious Paul, Comrade Control, Bedknack, uh, it, and the list goes on and on, and we'll be seeing all of them in due course. Right now, we're getting set up for a little four-way action, uh, two separate races. They're not all competing against each other, uh, but you see in uh, your upper part of your screen there, Afadik Cthulhu and Yogi the Monk, two of RGL Zone will be squaring off to advance into the uh, the main tournament bracket. Meanwhile, at the bottom of your screen, Zugman taking on two snack. So we have a couple of matches getting us started right out the gate here. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, we have a ton of entries, so we have had to double up on uh, the first couple uh, races <laughs> to make sure we can get everybody stream time and to get through all these in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, exactly. It's always hard to do everything in a one night only tournament, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. fun. One night only is um, not just uh, a gimmick. That's we only want to spend one night on this, <laughs> so we're not we're not trying to, uh, <laughs> to make this last too terribly long. But you know, with so many entrants, we get the Castlevania community big props. They came out strong for this, and uh, you know it's going to be a hell of a show. But um, it is it's also going to be a lot of uh, races in uh, in over the rest of the day, really. So sit back, relax, enjoy. Some very uh, Halloween-themed uh, racing tonight with uh, Castlevania all day long right here on RGL TV, and we're going to get this race started in just a few moments. Just waiting on one of our racers to get ready. And it looks like maybe they're about to be ready. There All it right. is. <laughs> Let's get this party started then. All right, the race bot has begun. We will be getting going in just a moment here with the Castlevania One Night Only Tournament opening round. Afata Cthulhu versus Yogi, Zugman versus Two Snack. We see the title screens up. They are getting ready to go, and they are off. The uh, bottom set of racers there are starting a little bit slower due to the limitations of the race bot in Discord. But there you see, everyone synced up very nicely, and we are off underway here in our first set, first pair of matches here in the Castlevania One Night Only tournament. Now. Uh, we're going to see a lot of different strats throughout the day. I mean, we got a lot of different ways that we can tackle uh, some of these stages here. And this first stage is a big one where um, there are a lot of different uh, sub weapons that you can use to your advantage. There's also a great bat crit kill, uh, crit kill, a crit, critical quick kill. <laughs> it's, I guess, what I'm trying to say, um, where you uh, can just defeat the, the bat instantly, in fact. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. First and foremost here, you see on the top part of your screen, Yogi and Afaka Cthulhu coming up to the first um, big kind of speed run trick there. Yogi opting to get the uh, stopwatch, AK foregoing it. And both of them making it up off that bat boost over the little ledge there. We should, will not be seeing too much of the basement here in this run, that's for sure. Uh, a lot of these runners are going to be doing that de-boost off of the bat, allowing them to completely bypass the whole basement section that you may remember if you played this game casually. Uh, that saves a lot of time. I don't even know how much time. A bunch. <laughs> Many several seconds. Now we see Afata Cthulhu setting up for the bat crit. Does not get it. Yogi sets up for it a little late as well, but he has the stopwatch. That means he can keep the bat right there, stop him, and get this bat put away before AK. So how does the crit work? Is it a damage transfer? Yeah, so, yeah, if you uh, if you take damage on the same uh, frame as you are attacked, then uh, you do massive damage to the boss. Um, or to any enemy. It doesn't have to just be a boss. Um, uh, you, you'll see that happen sometimes by accident to one of the bone pillars that, that shoot the little fireballs at you. Meanwhile, Zugman and Two Snake also over to stage two getting started there. But yeah, it's uh, it's just uh, a timing thing. If you if you hit them on the same frame that you take damage, 
big points. Um, it, it does a little bit less damage to Dracula when you do that than it does to other enemies. Uh, but the bat, you can kill instantly. Very cool little trick, but very difficult to time. It is frame perfect timing. So both AK and Yogi now have the stopwatch. And there we see Yogi doing a nice de-boost to uh, forego a lot of that nasty screen where we first start to see the Medusa heads rear their ugly heads. Um, they fly in that sine wave pattern, and you know a couple of those on the screen can give you a, a real bad time. Zugman and Tusnek also getting the de-boost there. And now, Afata Cthulhu making it under the the crushers no problem, as did Yogi. That's one of the nice advantages of having the stopwatch there. You don't have to time it out. You don't have to manipulate uh, your movement in, a, in such a way to get through without stopping. You can stop time whenever you want. And they switch over to the Holy Water. That's going to be their primary weapon of choice throughout much of the run. Yeah, the gonna... water really trivializes so many of these enemies. It really does. I mean, you see right here, both Afata Cthulhu and Yogi just stun-locking Medusa, no problem. And they'll be on to stage three. Meanwhile, Zugman and Tusnek coming into the Medusa fight themselves. And down she goes. Medusa, always a trivial boss in Castlevania games. Timers are not going to always be synced. I think a few of the runners have opted to start with a negative value on their timer that's throwing it off a little bit. I uh, think I, I think we ended up getting that sorted, at least for this race. We'll see what happens for the future races. But um, yeah, you know, that's, there's always a little bit of difference with uh, stream syncing. So no worries there. We have the race spot to make everything official. So never you mind, folks. But here's, here's one of the nastier rooms in the game. You see Yogi just getting bopped around here by the uh, the skeleton head, and he gets the axe. Both players at the top of your screen are going to get that axe there. That's going to allow them to get the cross coming up in this next room. Cross is going to be the most valuable weapon in this stage for the uh, for the mummy fight. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get there. And now you see Zugman. Uh, Tusnak taking a death there to that really nasty room. So he's going to have to make his way back. The nice thing is, you do have a Holy Water pickup right there at the start of Stage 3, so you can get uh, back to the weapon of choice here very easily. It's one thing to lose time in Castlevania, it's another thing to lose time and your weapon. And that's one of the big uh, downfalls that could uh, happen to our runners today. They just, you not only have uh, troll weapons that can happen to you, but you have uh, a loss of weapon, and sometimes you just can't get the weapon back you want, especially on stage five. Yogi taking a hit there. Yogi takes yeah, the hit. Hey, both put their hit. life very low, but he actually took a hit. AK getting lucky, getting the ointment there. He's going to be invulnerable. He has to deal with this bone pillar, no problem. Jumps over, gets the double shot, and he's going to get meat pick up right here. Uh, by... Oh my goodness, is he... Okay, there. <laughs> I thought for a second there, he was going all in with uh, with no health, but you see right there that, that other critical hit. When the mummies overlap like that, they uh, take damage for every frame that they are being attacked. So th that cross gets put to extra use there, and down goes the mummy. Meanwhile, Zugman taking a death on that final screen of stage three, given two a another chance to uh... fall. Yeah, Yogi is having a bit of a time here. This this is definitely a screen where because um, you're low on hearts, you're not really getting your, your whip upgraded. Not that you necessarily want it upgraded here, but um, without a, a weapon, a sub weapon, you know, it's, it's a little bit advantageous to do that to deal with the uh, birds that you that are flying all over the screen. Um, but, you know, with no sub-weapon, I mean, he, Yogi can get a dagger here, but you don't want a dagger so much. It's uh, not a super useful weapon. So he's uh, he's just trying to work his way back into this one. Meanwhile, AK does not get the, uh, the cave boost there, does not go up and over into the geometry of the stage. He's just uh, gonna go that bottom route, no problem. But he has a pretty sizable advantage at this point, so it's just about playing it safe for him. Yogi getting down to one health, as is Dude Snack on your bottom screen. Both of them clutching it out. And Two Snack now jumping out in front of Zugman. Meanwhile, Yogi moving on the stage four as AK is finding himself in the bird and flea man section of stage four. Now, this is a very uh, scary uh, section in particular because if you are out of position, a you, you could end up getting a troll weapon. Uh, the troll axe has been known to ruin many a run on that screen, but AK is through. He's going to get the double shot right there, 
and that's going to allow him to just stunlock the Frankenstein monster here. Yogi picking up that holy water as he makes his way through the cave. Zugman in a very similar position, and or excuse me, Tusnek in a very similar position, and Zugman uh, taking a death to the mummies. He's back uh, on this final screen of stage three. And it just goes to show just how brutally difficult this game is. We're going to see some high-level runs today, but yeah, you, you can't sleep on this game at all. Um, it, it is uh, very demanding, to say the least. And Zugman now doing this with no sub-weapon and with the, uh, the mid-tier whip. Meanwhile, Afata Cthulhu on to stage 5, and this is the stage where Holy Water is very critical. Um, you certainly can defeat death without Holy Water, but it is really hard. Zugman taking another death to the mummies, and at this point he is uh, he is uh, in, in pretty rough shape on this one. And there's only uh, Holy Water at the start of stage 5, right? Only the only at the, ve the very first checkpoint, yeah. Otherwise, you are out of Holy Water, so if you get a troll weapon or if you die, you got some decisions to make. Do you want to just take a game over and get your uh, item back? Oh, speaking of a game over there, Zookman taking one, and now he's going to start stage three over again. Meanwhile, two Snack taking a death. So whatever sub weapon uh, he had, which was presumably the Holy Water, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's difficult balancing all these out, but uh, he is back to the dagger. That is not ideal for this boss. It can be done. It is a tricky fight uh, without the Holy Water for sure. Yogi moving on to stage five. We see now two snack. Let's see how he handles this fight because you got this uh, Igor flying around, this this flea man uh, that is invulnerable. You can uh, stun him for a few seconds, but he cannot be killed. He shoots fireballs, and because jumping in this game is uh, rather rather uh, stiff, let us say, it is, it can be tricky to avoid. But look at two snack clutching it out. No problem with the Frankenstein fight, and that is no mean feat, ladies and gentlemen. A heck of a job out of two snack. Meanwhile, Zugman taking another death. He is uh, trying to make his way back through the stage, and at this point, he might be uh, a little bit uh, beside himself with how this has gone. But who can blame him? I mean, this, it's it's a heck of a, a stage here. The first um, race of the tournament is always really hard. Yeah, you never know how the mode. nerves are affecting folks. You're exactly right. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's uh. We'll see how he can close this one out, but right now, Tusnek comfortably in the lead, and Afata Cthulhu coming up to the death fight. He has five hearts, so he's going to be balancing uh, using the Holy Water and using his whip here to uh, damage down death. Put him away. One of the harder fights when you play this game, guys. Not even one of the harder fights. The hardest fight in the game when you play casually. Made trivial with the proper sub-weapon. And Yogi now has the axe. So, misfortune has befallen him, and he takes the death there. It looks like he's looking for a game over. Pretty that's reasonable not... play. That's right. As this Vada Cthulhu uh, moves on to the final stage, Dracula. And you're, meanwhile, in your bottom screen, or bottom part of your screen, Zugman, still making his way through stage three as Tusnek is barreling through stage five, maintaining his holy water. And it looks like Yogi has uh, thrown in the towel on this one. Yes, he has. He's forfeit in the race. Says there's plenty of action on the screen already. I can just sit here for a while. <laughs> That's right. Of course, this is a best of three uh, tournament. So uh, Yogi, uh, happy to say, you know what? This is not my race right now. Let's uh, just get focused for the next round here. And... Uh, We'll see what I can do. It is, however, single elimination, so it's a little scary to give up any round. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. Single elimination after best of three. That's sort of a weird way to put it. The point is that there is no losers one bracket. Health. That's right, no losers bracket. And Zugman getting through stage three. Finally puts those demons behind him, and he's gonna progress on in the uh, in the race here. As two snack getting to death, Afata Cthulhu has encountered Dracula, gets the double shot, has 14 hearts, so he's in good shape for the Cookie Monster form, that second form of Dracula. But he's gotta survive. One more hit for AK right now, and he will be starting this fight over again. 
There goes Dracula's head. It should be a fait accompli right here, as he has the ability to stun lock Cookie Monster until his heart desires, which will be at the point in which he's dead. And that's it. He's got plenty of hearts left. Dunzo and Afada Cthulhu is going to take match one as if it wasn't already um, settled with the forfeiture of Yogi, but AK putting a stamp on it with a, an official time of uh, 1224. A heck of a run here in the tournament to get us started. Meanwhile, Two Snack making his way through stage five as Zugman is up out of the, uh, the caverns of stage four. And we'll see just which sort of D-boost uh, Two Snack wants to go for. He's looking for this uh, initial one. The uh, the skeleton not being super cooperative. Two Snack says, you know what? You cost me enough time, buddy. You got to go. More D-boost opportunities here. Two Snack gets the first one. Jumps over the stairs. Kills that skeleton. And he's going to be looking to freeze time here. Takes a knockback. Chooses not to get the health right there. Oh, he goes back and gets it. Wants to get rid of the flea man first. And now he'll make his way down these stairs. Has an opportunity to use one more time stop. There it is. And that'll allow him to very easily make his way up these stairs and onto the Dracula fight. He's got plenty of health, so we shouldn't be seeing him take a tactical uh, death here. And Zugman, with the holy water, with the double shot, is going to put Frankenstein's monster away. And now he's just progressing on. He is, he is sta put stage three behind him. He is making his way onto stage five, but now two snack in the Dracula fight. The Dracula fight certainly can be a handful, but two snack has the great advantage here, of course. So I saw you had a lot of people uh, throwing their items after the boss kill. Is there to is there some sort of countdown for their hearts or something afterwards? Uh, for yeah, for uh, normal boss kills, yeah, for the Dracula boss fight, obviously that you know that it's just getting the orb at the end. That's uh, our finishing point of the game. But yeah, you uh, you do have an item countdown, so you want to be at zero hearts when you conclude a stage. We see here one last hit for first form Dracula for two snack. And he takes that hit there, so he cannot take any more hits from Cookie Monster. Now he doesn't have a double hit, which means he can get three to four hits in before Dracula's second form is going to move at him. And it looks like he's going for uh, four in most cases. He's going to walk through here, get to the other side, and get, give himself some breathing room. Here come the firewalls. Oh, he took the hit! Oh my goodness, he, he dodged out of the way, but the angle was, was such that he got it on the way coming down, and that's going to start the fight over for two snack and give Zugman a little bit of hope, just a little faint, gl fl yeah, faint glimmer of hope. <laughs> Easy for me to say. As two snack gets back in the Dracula fight. Does the death on Dracula make the fight much harder than just the way if you had gotten there normally? Uh, no, it doesn't affect anything like that. Uh, it's just, um, <laughs> it's just a tricky fight, and once you, uh, once you find yourself, uh, doing it one or two times, it, it can very easily become a little bit of a loop. Uh, and, and that's what the racers want to avoid, obviously. They don't want to, uh, be stuck in a Dracula loop or a loop anywhere, as we saw Zugman dealing with, uh, that, uh, death loop on stage three. You know, it, it, it in pretty much any race, uh, it's about mitigating mistakes. If you make a mistake, jump bouncing back from it as quickly as possible and hoping for the best. Uh, and it looks like Two Snake's doing that right now. He has uh, four health. Again, he cannot take a hit from Cookie Monster here. He has uh, what appears to be plenty of hearts. He's getting four hits in most cases here. He's going to walk through now. And that's going to give him some more breathing room. Oh man! Oh man! He jumps up. And, yeah, that, that those fireballs. Um, he doesn't always shoot them. Uh, so you gotta be uh, careful for that. If you go uh, with uh, three hits, he's more likely to shoot them than if you go with four. Usually, if you get four hits in on him, he's just gonna jump up uh, towards you. But yeah, that's now we're in a situation <laughs> where Zuckman is through stage four and on the same stage as Two Snack, which almost seemed impossible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little while ago, Two Snack did have a two-stage lead, but um, Zugman coming back in a strong way. Now, will he have enough time? That's the big question. As uh, Two Snack is taking a few hits from Dracula one once again. I 
There is he has the triple shot this time. He has eight hearts. Dracula has three more hits for his first form. And off goes the head. And <laughs> we're watching Zugman make his way to the Dracula fight himself. Uh, death here for two snack would really even things out, but it looks like he's got it this time. Puts away Cookie Monster. It just as he's feeling the pressure on him. And there it is for two snack. A little bit of uh, a, uh, some drama building up at the end there, but two snack closes it out. Takes the first round here between himself and Zugman, and Zugman just gets to the Dracula fight. And time to wave goodbye to his competition. Congratulations to two snack for taking that one, but it is best of three here in this opening round in the Castlevania one night only tournament. And now you wonder how these two are going to fare against each other uh, on the next round, or the next uh, the next match. Because, uh, I mean, Zuckman showed that, you know, as, as long as he's uh, keeping it clean, he can put a run together. And that's the name of the game, always. You know, there's a lot of trolliness in this game, for sure. And a lot that can uh, get inside your head. But and Zuckman came back in a strong way after having some real rough times. And it looks like he's just going to put uh, Cookie Monster down no problem here. And there it is. Look at that first try fight on Dracula. <laughs> Made it way closer than uh, we expected, that's for sure. Zugman with an unofficial time of 18.38. Heck of a comeback for him, but uh, too little too late, unfortunately, as Tusnek takes their first race. And we're going to get our second one going here in just a moment. If you're keeping score at home, it is Afata Cthulhu 1, Yogi the Monk 0. And on your bottom, screen, bottom half of your screen, uh, Two snack one, Zugman zero. Best of three format here, all day on this tournament. We're well, getting those next races set up right now, so it should be starting soon. And there you see the the candle burning bright next to our winners of the first match, Fata Cthulhu and Tusnek. We'll see if their opponents can uh, push a game three here. Some of our racers taking a moment to discuss the last race, as you often want to do when you're racing. <laughs> Got to tell about all the troubles you had and compare them to the guy that you were racing against. Oh, of course. So we're just uh, sorting out some technical issues here real quick. Stand by, everyone. We'll get our next race going here in the Castlevania One Night Only Tournament right here on RGL TV. Enemy with you alongside Kavik right now. Calling the action. Letting you know what's going on. And we're seeing a lot of Stage 3 again here in the, uh, the attract screens. Now, it's interesting. By letting these attract screens run, you actually invoke a glitch where the music uh, does not start uh, initially when you start the game. So uh, we, we may have some uh, some seemingly muted streams to start, but once they get to the bat, they will uh, kick back in. Assuming they don't reset, they may reset right before that happens, right before they get going, in which case the music will come right back. Seems that all of our races are ready and we are starting the top race first, followed shortly by the bottom race. And 
And there they go. A Fata Cthulhu versus Yogi the Monk, round two. Of course, a Fata Cthulhu getting the uh, forfeit victory there, but had a heck of a run himself. Had a mid-12 time. A very strong way to start this tournament. And there you see Zugman and Tusnek getting going as well. Looks like Tusnek is not yet started. Looks like he's resetting and will be gone in a moment, hopefully. Oh, there, okay, we jumped ahead. <laughs> Very good. So last time we saw Yogi the Monk get the uh, stopwatch here in this station, that allows you to... Uh, I don't think Yogi's using it to do the bat boost, but he is using it as a backup for the bat. Uh, which is nice. It looks like Afata Cthulhu is going to take this as well. If you just take damage from that bat, um, you can force that stopwatch to spawn. Both of them making it up and over there, getting that nice D-boost. It's a pretty easy muscle memory uh, technique, but it's one of those things where if you miss it, um, it can become really frustrating. Because you, like, A, you know you can get it, and B, um, just you know you're losing a nice chunk of time over a silly mistake. And then we see our top two runners setting up for the bat crit. A Fata Cthulhu doesn't get it, but he uses the stopwatch. Yogi doesn't get it, also has a stopwatch. AK is going to put the bat down first. Followed momentarily thereafter by Yogi. And they'll be on the stage, too. Meanwhile, Tusnek using the axe, a tried and true method, as well as Zugman. A little bit of an older strat to kill the bat takes a little bit longer than using or uh, doing the crit kill or using the clock but very good as well and everyone on the stage two now about Cthulhu and yogi monk making their way through the second screen pretty well in lockstep with each other and i see them hang on to the stopwatch until the crusher section, at which point they will be switched. Oh, he's, I stand corrected. A Fakatulu going with the dagger there. Yogi is going to stick with the stopwatch into the crusher. That's going to allow him to stop the crushers. Fakatulu instead will have to time it out a little bit or stop and wait if he is not feeling that, that timing. Does not want to get hit by the crushers. One hit by the crusher is a death. Oh, and Tusnek taking a fall there. So he has to go back to the previous checkpoint. That's going to put Zugman out in front of him for a little bit. Oh, it looks like AK not able to do that D-boost there. That's going to put Yogi out in front. And there we see a Fata Cthulhu putting that Holy Water down on one of the Bone Pillars. That's going to allow him to get a triple shot coming up. You have to do uh, several hits of damage from your sub-weapon to... Uh, Enemies and items in the game, items being these candles. The more stuff you attack with the uh, the sub weapon, the closer you get to getting that double or triple shot. There's the triple. Choose not to get it. It was overlapping with Medusa. And Yogi now first on the stage three. Afata Cthulhu is falling shortly behind. Zugman is there, and now Tusnek making his way to the Medusa fight. Just a few seconds behind after taking that death. Not a terrible death in this stage. We see Yogi using this holy water here to uh, get these flea men to um, not be an issue. The flea men follow you with uh, great speed, but if you put the holy water down at just the right place, they run right into it, and they are no longer a threat. And here comes, again, a very scary sc screen in this game. No problem for Yogi, but he does not get the axe drop. The axe turns into a money bag. And now he's got some decisions to make about how he wants to get uh, this a this uh, cross on the next screen. Looks like he's going to go for the long whip. There it is. You can use holy water to get that, but it's uh, a little bit trickier to be a little bit more precise with that. But with the long whip now, he is going to just be able to do a quick jump, get the cross, and away he goes. Meanwhile, Fa Cthulhu having the axe still. Actually getting the axe from the previous screen allows him to get the cross without stopping. That's going to get him right back into this race. 
Oh, and there we see a crit on the Bone Pillar, as we mentioned before. Taking that hit on the same frame that he hit the Bone Pillar. So the Bone Pillar goes down in one hit. And now, Fata Cthulhu, just a few seconds behind Yogi the Monk. Meanwhile, Zugman just a few seconds ahead of Tusnek on the bottom half of your screen. Tusnek doing a debut strat. Uh, risky strat, but very effective right there. And that's going to put him pretty much in lockstep with Zugman. Having a heck of a race. But this is the screen that gave so many of our racers problems in and uh, Yogi the took a death match. right there, too. Yes, he did. Once again. So we'll see how Yogi bounces back as a Fata Cthulhu now with one health, picking up the meat and into the mummy fight. And I believe Zugman, it, it, it has another, we have another name tag there, but Zugman <laughs> now uh, taking a death himself. That gives Tusnek the opportunity to jump out in front, get into the mummy fight first. Yogi onto the mummy fight, but does not have the cross. And Just Tusnek an putting it down. Update there. And now Yogi looks at, looking to clutch this one out. Has one more hit to get, and there he goes. And Zugman now on the mummies with no sub-weapon. Two hits left. Looks like he's going to be moving on here. There it is. So everyone gets through stage three mostly unscathed, at least by comparison to last time. AK was getting bounced around there, missed his platform, had to wait for it. That's going to cost him a fair amount of time. Yeah, just enough to, uh, if he, you know, Yogi can keep it clean through here. I'll give him a little bit of a boost back into this one. But that death did him no favors on stage three. Two Snake making his way through the caverns. Zugman following shortly behind. Yogi there as well. And AK trying to avoid a troll weapon drop here. Has his holy water. Not using it so much here. Uh, I don't know if that's a tactical choice or if he's uh, if he's just not feeling comfortable using it or, or wants to maintain his ammunition. I'm not sure exactly what. But he does want to use a little bit of it because he does want to uh, be able to get that double shot straight away. Oh, and he gets the rosary there. That's going to clear the screen. And that'll allow him to get through to the checkpoint. One health left. He's probably going to want to stop and kill this bone dragon. Because if, if he does the deboost and doesn't get it, or if he does the, the jump past it and doesn't get it, he's going to die before he gets the chance to get this health. Kills him using that stun lock strat with the holy water. And he is through. Now he's got 10 hearts. He's got a little bit of health. Should be good to go here for the Frankenstein monster fight. Tusnek making his way over to the fight. Gets the troll axe though. So he's going to be in a little bit of a jam. But we saw him make it through this fight without the holy water last time. So he's tried and true on this. Zugman, meanwhile, does have a Holy Water. That's going to give him a pretty nice advantage uh, to catch back up to Two-Snack here. With, look at the jukes from Two-Snack as well. Yogi also with the Troll Axe. So he's got some work he's got to do. AK is on the Stage 5. Zugman now putting away Frankenstein. Two-Snack getting the orb. And Zugman getting the orb. So they are neck and neck again. <laughs> and meanwhile, AK... Getting his D-boost on, making his way up through this first screen of Stage 5. And Yogi taking the death to Frankenstein, picking up that dagger. And now he's got the short whip still. Unfortunately, you need uh, eight hearts, I believe, to get to the longer whip upgrade. It looks like Yogi's just going uh, YOLO here. Not working yeah, out there. Yeah, trying to tank that. Yeah, it's, you, you, uh, once, once you're on this stage, you start taking... Uh, I don't know if you're taking three or four... Oh, there you go. Four hits uh, of damage every time you're touched, so you got to be careful with that. You can only take four hits overall. Oh, and Yogi already in a little bit of a life deficit. It's going to make this a tricky fight for him. AK now just continuing to make his way through Stage 5, as are both Zugman and Tusnek. Everyone maintaining their holy water, exception of Yogi, who is just trying to Deal with this Frankenstein fight. A lot of times when you're learning to speedrun things, you don't get the the backup strats. You're just <laughs> trying to go as fast as possible. You reset every time something goes wrong. So he doesn't look terribly comfortable with Frankenstein without the holy water. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things that you get better with over time. It's not a very easy thing to just pick up and, and run through. 
that that flea man is is the the whole difference obviously you know jumping around being invulnerable doing contact damage and damage when he shoots the fireballs at you uh very nasty piece of business though yogi tries to jump over but that's gonna be a game over for him and there again we see the forfeiture from yogi in ray spot so that means ak will be sure to advance to our next round here in the castlevania one night only tournament regardless well i guess if he forfeits then we would go to a match three but he just really has to finish this one out at all and that would uh, allow him to advance and i don't know about that strat there in an elimination match you never know what could happen to ak um we, we saw a huge comeback for zugman in the last race um against two snacks so uh, that dracula fight that can really uh swing things but nonetheless, Yogi has made his decision. He has, uh, he has uh, picked up from the game over, but the, the forfeit is uh, is in place. And AK through the death fight, no problem for him with this holy water. Locking that bat in place and just trying to get through this part without getting any troll bats. Now, recently, CL Chambers. Uh, Highlighted a way to get through this section without uh, getting trolled, which is very nice because uh, many a run has been lost to uh, bats being buttholes for this for opening section. You are jumping over many open pits. You want to avoid them as best as you can. And AK is able to do that. It looks like Zugman and Tusnek are trying their best to do that. A low fireball there from Zugman chooses to take the damage from the bat instead. And Zugman is the first to the checkpoint. Or excuse me, Tusnek is the first to the checkpoint. Zugman following shortly thereafter. The bat hits him again, so now he's in a little bit of a life deficit. It's going to have to uh, ease up on some of the deboosts as a result. And that's going to give Zugman a chance to uh, open up a further lead against his opponent. As AK now onto the Dracula fight. And all he needs to do is close this one out, and he will be moving on. So, Two Snake is probably going to be thinking about all the trouble he had with Dracula before. He's got to do this on the first try, or else Zugman's going to be right there. Interesting decision to not take the tactical death there. He is down a hit and a half right now against uh, Dracula, so he's got to be really careful with not taking any damage from Dracula. Of course, that can be easier said than done. Dracula does teleport at, um, as far as I know, they are random positions. Uh, he tries to do a deboost there. Or not a boost, excuse me, the crit there. Goes for it again, does not get it. And now two seconds put himself into a bind here. I don't expect that Zugman is going to be going for a critical hit here. Two sec cannot anymore. He cannot take any more damage. He will die. Well, wait a minute. Zugman has really low health. I don't know if he got the crit. I looked away from his screen. He may have got one. Either that or he got several double hits and jumped back into this. But now, it, this is a photo finish coming up here, folks. Now, Tusnek has plenty of hearts, more, almost double the amount of hearts that Zugman has, so he's going to be able to uh, be very careful with his holy water. As... How did Tusnek not get hit there? <laughs> yeah, hitboxes are tricky on these old N Nintendo games. And Zugman, Zugman's going to win this one! <laughs> Wow, Just barely in front of two snack, it looks like. We'll check the race spot to be sure, but it looks like unofficially. And well, this well, is interesting race, because race, race spot has the results in reverse here. We're gonna need to get a ruling on this one, but that was super close, regardless of the results. AK, of course, also finishing that out, so he'll be advancing. But we got to go to a race three here between these two, it looks like. I don't know. Well, we have to see. It might have been two snack taking it there. Yeah, part of the problem is that... Uh... I, I believe that Zugman is French, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, so he has a lot more lag to the race bot than potentially to Snake. I have no idea where he is. Uh, so that is going to affect the results, and we don't want foreigners to be punished just because they have laggier response from, from race bot. 
so we will try and figure out how this is going. It's also important to remember that they aren't always going to be perfectly synced on the restream. We do our best to sync them as best no, as we can. No, but I mean, if you look at we can't timers, really. If you, if you looked at their individual timers, it looked like Tusnek uh, was a second behind Zogman. Now that's individual timer. That's not official, but it's something. So yeah, we were just trying to uh, get this sorted here on the Castlevania One Night Only tournament right here on RGL TV. Enemy alongside Kavik, uh, bringing you the action right now. We are getting the our next races set up, but also just making sure we uh, have this one properly adjudicated. So I think what we're going to end up doing, I think the way this is going to go is because that was, it looked like, so what ended up happening is on the, on your screen and based on their own personal timers, it looked like Zugman won by a second. And on race bot, it looked like two snack won by a second. So I think we're going to try to set up a rubber match here between the two. I think that's the way we're going to go. We'll keep you guys up to date as soon as this is made official.